this is Danielle from Put a Finish on It and welcome to my bookshelf tour. This is just my young adult books. Some of these I have had since I was 11, 12, 13 and some of them I've picked up along the way. I did have to pare down my collection as a teenager to fit it in the space that I had so I do regret getting rid of some, some books as a teenager and have tried to find some of them again. Because of regretting getting rid of some, now whenever I see YA books from the 70s or 80s, I just have to get them even though they might just be silly or fluffy ones. So I make no promises that all of these books are fantastic, fantastic works of young adult literature. Um, some of them I just couldn't resist. And they are organized by the last name of the author. So we start over here with these books. There you see I got my Judy Bloom collection. If no one's ever read this Letters to Judy, it's awesome. It's just letters from fans from throughout her writing career. And um, it's fascinating to read. Baby Island, classic. Uh, my mom read this to me out loud when I was little and I have read it at least a couple times since then. Light a Single Candle is about a girl who goes blind and then um, goes off to college and the sequel is her in college and I have never found it and I would love to read it. It's called Gifts of Gold. Um, there's A Perks of Being a Wallflower which I read as, as an adult. The Goats is awesome. Brock Cole, that's being turned into a movie soon. Ellen Comfort is sort of a humorous writer. Uh, and I remember reading some of those when I was younger and then getting rid of them and now I've picked up some again. Caroline B. Cooney writes some scary ones, which I'm not a huge fan of scary books, but these are um, not the scary ones. I'm Not Your Other Half was great, I just read it recently. Chris Critcher, a more contemporary YA author. Mermaids by Patty Dan. Um, just like the movie with Cher in it. Great. Paula Danziger collection. Um, then I have my Maggie Adams um, dancing books. I love to read um, dance themed novels. I just find dance is romantic and of course there's always the dance partner as the love interest or not. Um, Nothing's Fair in the Fifth Grade is another one I read as a child and then I was delighted to find there were sequels um, going up to her being 17, 17 and in between. Um, Ice Castles, classic, Annie on my mind, oh I read that in high school, so good. Summer of My German Soldier I love, but found the sequel to be sad. And here we have Sooner or Later Waiting Games and Now or Never, which is my most beloved young adult trilogy. The first one was written I think in 79 and then early 80s and then early 90s for the third one. And then Breaking Up is Hard to Do is another one by Bruce and Carol Hart that is not related. Moving on to the second shelf. Um, The Runaway's Diary, The Endless Step, uh, is about a girl in Russia. Second star to the right is an anorexia-themed novel. Then we have two more dancing novels, Farewell to Manzanar, which I read in 8th grade, about um, Japanese-American internment during World War II. Then we have my Norma Klein collection. And there's, she has written so many books, and there's still so many on my list that I have not read. But I absolutely love her. She writes candidly about um, sex. Usually it's the first time kind of a story for your first boyfriend. Um, and then those three on the bottom are more um, geared toward adults. Sunshine is based on a true story, and The Sunshine Years is the sequel. Just Friends, I believe, might have been published posthumously. 
Um, she's definitely one of those band authors from the 70s for all of the explicit material. Um, then I have these Linda Lewis books here. Has anyone read these? We Hate Everything But Boys is the first one. And then it goes on in a series. And there's more after My Heart Belongs to That Boy. I think she's about 14 or 15 by the time this novel happens. Um, and the character's name is Linda as well. Um, and I loved them. And I just found them so... I don't, at the time, I, I'm thinking I was the same age as the protagonist. And I just found them to be so relatable. And I love them. And I wish I could find the rest. Then we have um, all my Anastasia books. I love Lois Lowry. Anastasia is just such a lovable, quirky, intelligent character. Her parents are artists. Um, it's great. Her dad keeps his uh, notebooks in the refrigerator. I remember that part. He's a writer. Um, let's see. Oh, I just recently read The Fact and Fictions of Mina Pratt, which I loved. Um, it was just beautiful. The boy on the cover, oh, it's pretty terrible um, 80s fluff, but it's an Avon Flair book and I had to pick it up. Norma Fox Mazur. I haven't actually read those two short story books, but Up in Seth's Room, again one of those books that I just couldn't put down because it was so um, new and exciting and sexy. It's this 14-15 year old girl who falls in love with a 19 year old and they actually um, you know, he loves her back, and they really tried to make it work. Um, then we have Megan McCafferty's books. Again, I didn't discover these books until last year, and I have read the full series of the Jessica Darling, the five of them. I have not read the prequels. Um, and I did enjoy all five, but I definitely love the first two the best. And then we have Beauty, a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, which I love. A couple of Betty Miles books. Patience and Sarah, which I read because it's mentioned in Annie on My Mind, um, which I really loved this one as well. Um, the Smart Girl looks like 80s fluff, but it actually ended up being pretty good. Um, then we have a book, Twink, from the 70s about a girl with cerebral palsy, some Katherine Patterson, another 80s fluff Avon Flair novel. I've got your number, Freaky Friday. Then we have How I Live Now, which everyone's reading because the movie's coming out. I read it uh, five or six years ago, really enjoyed it. Um, then another Avon Flair class pictures by Marilyn Sachs. That was pretty good. Down here is the third shelf. Um, some more Marilyn Sachs. The House Tibet I remember really loving, even though it was a tough um, tough subject matter at the beginning. Um, How to Meet a Gorgeous Girl. Uh, Marjorie Sharma has written a series about these, and there it was mildly entertaining. And that's the only one I've read so far. Tree Grows in Brooklyn, I love it. Changing Places, oh, I thought this was awesome at the time. These two guy girl best friends change bodies for a week. Carol Snyder. Leave Me Alone, Ma, and Memo to Myself When I Have a Teenage Kid. I mean, with titles like those, you've got to read them. Some Sonia Sones, which I read as an adult and really enjoyed them. They're sort of in poetry form, which would be a turnoff to me, but then I actually gave them a try and really liked it. In a Mirror is a book from the 50s, actually, and it follows a girl as she starts college, and I have found it so rare to find young adults set in college, um, and I really enjoy this, this novel. She goes to an all-girls school, and it was an interesting perspective to read. Then I have The Shoe Books by Noel Streetfeld, which if you have watched um, You've Got Mail, you'll remember these being mentioned. And I love them because once again they're dancing and skating type books, most of them. Um, moving on, I really enjoyed Julian F. Thompson there. Um, the Grounding of Group 6 was the first one I read and the one I loved the most. 
a group of teenagers are out in the forest by themselves because they find out their parents don't want them anymore. And they're sent away to a camp. Uh, and it turns out their lives are in danger, so they escape to the forest. And uh, romance and adventure ensue. Crooked Kind of Perfect I just read recently. Uh, which I really loved it, about a girl who wants to play the piano and gets stuck with an organ instead. Then we have my Cynthia Voigt collection. Once again, it's the kind of beginning where my mother read me the first one, uh, Homecoming. She read it to me out loud as a kid, and I um, continued the series on my own. I was off Dicey Song. A solitary Blue. I loved reading these. Um, they're not all connected plot-wise. Some of them are about minor characters. They get their own book. Um, like Come a Stranger is about Dicey's friend who um, is a dancer. So once again I enjoyed reading a dancing story all the way. So we get to follow Dicey from the age of 12 up through the series until she's 17. And then I have Bad Girls on the top there. I haven't read the rest of the Bad Girls series. Um, reading them as, as an adult didn't speak to me as much clearly as as having read the Homecoming series as an adolescent. Oh, uh, has anyone read these Ellen Emerson White books, the President's Daughter series? They're fantastic, written in the 80s about the first woman president and her teenage daughter. The third one gets pretty scary because she's kidnapped, the daughter is. Ellen Emerson White has written recently a sequel to them. Um, I heard that she updated them to fit more on the 21st century stuff and I don't know how I feel about that. I know that books need to be updated to appeal to today's audience and all of that, but what's so great about these books is that the first woman president was in the 80s, and there's all sorts of things in the 80s that should still be there. The watching Hill Street Blues and all of that stuff that audiences today wouldn't get. I didn't watch Hill Street Blues either, but that's what that character was doing at that time, and I feel like it should stay that way. I also really loved um, Hard Love by Ellen Wintlinger. That was another more contemporary book, and I have read more books by this author um, from the library. Okay, now down to the Z's. One of my most favorite authors, Paul Zendel, uh, most famous for The Pig Man, there, but there are so many other books that he's written, um, 60s and 70s, I think. Also, his wife wrote with him The Star for the Late Comer and her own book, The Hollywood Dream Machine. These books were just. He's, he's one of those authors that really took teenagers seriously and took their feelings and their problems and their wants seriously and when I read these as a teenager they were they just took hold of me because you know he talked about all of those serious issues drugs and sex and abortion and all of those things um, and I love them now you may be wondering why I have Let It Snow here out of order um, because it's written by three people and I have chosen not to put it in alphabetical order um, at all. And why would this be the only John Green or Maureen Johnson book I have? Um, I have read John's other books and I, I do enjoy them, but because I have limited space for books and because they're widely available right now, I'm choosing not to own them and to save space for um, those hard to find books that I like to collect. And right next to that I have a beautiful old edition of Jane Eyre um, that does not fit on my adult fiction shelf. Um, not fiction, it has nonfiction as well, my adult bookshelf. Um, so it's here with my YA. And I love it. So there's the whole thing again. Uh, thanks for watching. If you see any book here that I didn't speak about specifically, I'd love to tell you more about it if you're interested. I realize I didn't fully explain my rationale for having only let it snow, and that is I like to reread it at the holidays, so it's something that I want to keep.
Also, please check me out on Goodreads. I find that it's really fun to compare books and see what everyone else is reading. Thanks!